The biggest stories impacting rural America in 2019 could be summarized to three words, trade, ethanol, and weather. The government was closed for business when the ball dropped on 2019 as federal agencies tried to figure out who was essential and who would remain open during the impasse. The administration found money to keep supporting nutrition assistance programs like SNAP and WIC afloat. However, by year's end, the USDA would announce a reduction in eligibility for those receiving benefits. Secretary Sonny Perdue announced an increase in work requirements for those applying for assistance. A spring outbreak of severe weather started with tornadoes in the south. High snowpack prompted the National Weather Service to issue flooding advisories from St. Louis north to the Canadian border. Then a bomb cyclone went off and covered territory from Colorado to South Dakota in early March. The massive low pressure system shuttered interstates with a blizzard. Then a quick thaw freed ice chunks which jammed rivers. Heavy rains added more water to the problem, falling on frozen ground and running straight into rivers. Damage estimates quickly topped $1 billion as disaster areas were declared in several states along the Missouri and Mississippi rivers. We're, we're with you, and the American people are going to stand with people across Nebraska, across Iowa, across all of the eight states that have been impacted by this severe weather and this flooding. Many flooded areas along the Missouri River would go without a crop as several rounds of rain washed out any chance to plant in 2019. The same was true along a line from southern Michigan through Arkansas to New Orleans. USDA estimates put more than 19 million acres in prevent plant, up nearly 300 percent from the five-year average of 4.8 million acres. Those that were able to finally get into the field were delayed on both ends of the cycle as wet weather seemed a part of the story at every key point of the growing season, including early snowfall in major corn and soybean producing states. June's World Pork Expo was canceled as organizers cited an abundance of caution in trying to stem the African swine fever from spreading to the United States. Producers in China have dealt with the bulk of cases that have hammered herds. The National Pork Producers Council of Anna attracts 20,000 visitors annually from across the globe to Iowa. We lifted the restrictions on E15 just in time to fuel America's summer vacations. We just made. President Trump made a victory lap on E15 during a trip to Council Bluffs, Iowa in June even as the president was declaring a win for renewable fuels, refineries were closing or limiting production as the EPA continued to hand out small refinery exemptions. We cannot afford to see this victory on E15 undermined by more exemptions for small refiners from the RFS. Biofuel supporters touted their own victory over SREs after an Oval Office meeting with President Trump in September. Iowa Senator Charles Grassley said what transpired in that session was a win for all sides, but he still wanted the deal in writing. We left that meeting satisfied that if it comes out on paper, because EPA is writing it, and you know I think the big oil has too much influence in EPA, but if it comes out on paper the way that we orally had a discussion with the president, and everybody seemed to be satisfied. Grassley and other renewable fuel supporters would spend the rest of 2019 on this same message, appealing to the president to keep his word. Congress reached a deal in late December, announcing a five-year extension of the biomass-based diesel tax credit. Days later, the EPA set 2020 levels at 15 billion gallons of conventional biofuel volumes. Renewable industry champions said the government will still have too much wiggle room in deciding waivers for oil refiners in 2020. Well, we're very disappointed, uh, frustrated, and quite frankly, a lot of the people I talk to are a little bit angry. That same day of December 19, Congress voted to approve the USMCA. The replacement for NAFTA was met with mostly cheers in the deal between Canada 
the United States and Mexico as issues over labor, manufacturing, and agriculture had finally been sorted out. The ups and downs of this trade deal had drug on for a good portion of 2019, much like the ongoing negotiations with China. The war between the U.S. and China escalated as breakthroughs failed to materialize, which would have allowed the ending of tariffs on thousands of items. A phase one deal was announced in late December with official translation and signing set for early 2020. The loss of markets with a major trading partner was cause enough for the government to put together the market facilitation program. MFP payments were aimed at assisting farmers suffering from trade damage done by retaliation by foreign nations. The announcement of the MFP came in May. Calculations for payouts were based on previous production volumes and the money was doled out over the rest of the year. The effects from the deals or no deals reverberated through 2019 in the markets, both commodity and financial. And I think as farmers hold this crop and get into January and need money and need to make sales, this is as good as it's going to get. And 2019 was the year two strong voices of agriculture on this program went silent with the passing of Doug Jackson and Walt Hackney. Both appeared on this program over several decades as market analysts. Jackson died in May at the age of 67. Hackney was 81 and passed in April. For Market to Market, I'm Paul Yeager.